What does a sci-fi pirate captain in a flooded, apocalyptic city look like? Maybe something like this. This right here is the last miniature necessary to build two full crews of scavenger pirates for my miniature skirmish game, Spire Seas. As the captain of my scavenger crews, I spent a lot more time thinking about the design, how to make a sci-fi pirate character that fit into the world of Deluvian Chronicles. For this mini, I had three main goals. First, it had to represent the aesthetic of Spire Seas and the rest of the Deluvian world. Second, it had to fit well with the mechanics of the game, both the current rule set and any that might come in the future. And third, it had to stand out from the rest of the minis, both the ones I've already finished and the crews that I'll be making in the future. With all that in mind, let's talk about the aesthetic. Spire Seas is a game about pirates, essentially. Crews of adventurous outcasts in search of loot and legend on the high seas. But it also takes place far in the future, after the collapse of an advanced sci-fi civilization. The seas are treacherous because of the rogue AI and mutant fish monsters that lurk in the waters, and the loot is the salvaged relics of that ancient civilization. Now I'll be sharing a bit more about this world in my next video, so let me know down in the comments if there's anything you want to know in detail. As for my captain, I wanted him to portray elements of both the classic pirate and that collapsed sci-fi future. So of course, he had to have that recognizable pose and a long button-up coat. But instead of a wooden leg, he uses this cybernetic powered claw and he's covered in power armor and salvaged metal. And for those of you who were looking for even more of a piratey look with a feathered tricorn and a cybernetic eye patch, don't worry, I've got you covered too. The nice thing about this design is that it works well for a number of different sci-fi settings, so I hope people feel free to use this miniature in other games and projects as well. But for me, I was focused on making sure that it would work well for Spire Seas. So let's talk about the game. The rules of Spire Seas are written to be miniature agnostic. You can use whatever you like to represent your crew, but there are a few things to keep in mind. First, the scale is pretty set. This is a 28mm miniature on a 25mm base. Now, you can change this in the game if you'd like to for your own models, but I chose this scale to make sure that the boats looked relatively realistic when on the table, and maintain a 2 foot by 2 foot play area. However, for my captain, I did use the larger, more muscular base mesh for the model so that he does stand a little taller than the rest of the crew. Also, there are a few upcoming changes to the rules that I want to be ready for. For the next alpha version, which is coming soon, I promise, the captains are going to be much more important. For one, every captain will have access to relics, powerful technology left over from the ancients that grant them special abilities and actions in the game. For this model, I chose to represent that with his massive gauntlet and the backpack which powers it. This also plays into another mechanical point that I have to keep in mind. In the next version of Spire Seas, captains will automatically have access to both melee and ranged attacks, and players will get to choose to spend points to lean more heavily into one or the other. This should keep the captains relevant throughout the entire game, while still allowing for some customization, and keeping the other members of your crew at least somewhat important. This model obviously has his big heavy sword, so players might spend more points on melee, for example. But his gauntlet here also kind of looks like Iron Man's repulsor tech, so you may want to spend more points in range. 
finding that balance in the design between these two attacks is going to be a bit of a challenge, but I've already got some ideas for it going forward, so I'm not too worried. And that brings us to the third goal, to make sure that the captain stood out on the table. Like so many great pirates from fiction, I wanted the captain of the scavengers to have a certain sense of nobility and style, to be just a cut above the rest of his crew. But I also wanted to play with that trope just a little bit. So when it came time to paint, I decided to make all of the power armor either yellow or orange, reminiscent of a construction site. I imagine that this character, as a young lad on his first outing, stumbled across the exoskeleton or robotic shell of some sort of construction machine, and, realizing that this technology still worked, started to put it to use. As an added benefit, this color scheme stands out really clearly against the greens, grays, and blues of the terrain that I use for Spire Seas. And now that I've finalized it for the captain, I can start to implement it into the rest of his crew. Not that they'll have as much power armored gear, but at least some elements of that orange and yellow. But of course, this is just my take on the model, so you should feel free to do whatever you like when it comes time to paint your own. Maybe lean more heavily into that rusty aesthetic, or take the opposite route and make his coat nice and crisp and clean. I'm really excited to see what other takes people come up with, but for now, with those three goals ticked off, let's take a look at the finished model. So, what do you think? Did I hit my goals? Or maybe you prefer the more piratey version? Either way, let me know down in the comments. Personally, I'm pretty pleased with the overall design, and I'm really excited to actually get him onto the table for a game of Spire Seas, which, let's face it, that's all that really matters for a miniature skirmish game. Although, before I can get a proper game of Spire Seas in, I still have a lot of painting to do. Both the rest of the crew using my deckhands, which I made last time, as well as a secondary crew led by my AI designed model. All of these are also available right now on my mini factory for just a few bucks. So head over there to get the STLs if you want to print out and paint up your own crew of scavenger pirates. But of course, a crew is not a crew without a ship. So my next big project is going to be making a 3D printable scav ship. So far, all of my ships have been scratch built, which is fun and I love it, but I want to make this available to anyone. So I'm going to be working on a modular vessel for people to use in their games. However, because this is going to take a little more time in my next video, I'd like to share a little more about the lore of the world and the story behind Spire Seas. So stick around here on the channel if you want to see that. And if you want to try out the game Spire Seas for yourself, you can head over to DiluvianChronicles.com where you can download a free, very early alpha version of the game. Keep in mind that the current version is going to be heavily changed in just a couple months, 
so don't get too attached to any of your lists. But hopefully the miniatures themselves shouldn't be affected at all. Plus, if there is anything that you really enjoy about that version, please let me know. Any and all feedback is extremely appreciated. Anyway, that's it for today, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe even learned something in the process. See you next time.